which is that. <laughs> Max Olson, theathletic.com, joined us on 365 Sports. Max, the SEC meetings in Destin, uh, they floated out, hey, by the way, make sure that 9-3 and three is not something that should be looked at uh, uh, poorly, especially if you're a part of the SEC. And then there's a lot of other things. And it's kind of like schedules and times and stuff, which means we're not far away but still want to decompress your thoughts about anything out of Destin that kind of caught your attention this week. Uh, you know, more details came out about the NCAA video game this week, so really no thoughts on anything going on, Justin. <laughs> it truly doesn't rate for me whatsoever. <laughs> have you uh, have you already uh, black marketed one of those uh, games somehow? No, I have not. I you know I have not played the game um, yet. Uh, I have not uh, received an advanced copy of it, um, but I will be be praying on that every night before I go to bed that uh, we'll get to play it soon. Max, are you? I probably, uh, I guess, amazed in some ways at how now even spring meetings have suddenly become such a hot topic in college football. I don't recall them being as front and center. I understand the time period we're in now where there are now Texas and Oklahoma in that league, but uh, just the, the day-to-day of this this industry, I guess, continues to, to grow, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, I think certainly the SEC uh, has, uh, made an effort to, you know, make that kind of a bigger event. I mean, you saw obviously not just athletic directors coming out to that, but um, football coaches, basketball coaches, um, you know, it, it, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, it, reasons for media to be go down to Destin now. Um, and, and, and obviously Texas and Oklahoma there now too. So between that and, and uh, the recent settlement, um, I think that there's, there's a lot to cover this week, a lot of questions. Um, you know, I, I thought, uh, you know, Pete Samuel had a good joke on, on it when he was on Fine Bomb saying that, you know, it, it's kind of Jeopardy week because all, uh, all the questions are, are – or all the answers are in the form of questions this week. I, there's not a lot of certainty about, um, you know, some of the details of uh, what the settlement's going to actually mean for things like roster limits, stuff like that. Um, you know, and I, I think that while, while everyone wants to pick Greg Sankey's brain about where this is all going, um, we still got a lot, a lot of this play up. Max, um, when when you hear the you know the the kind of rallying for nine and three is a good year a good year or whatever, do, I mean I know it's going to be better and the, the SEC is going to have these great schedules and all that, but they say that, but it doesn't really apply. If NC State or Iowa State said the same thing, wouldn't they turn around and be like, well, nine and three is not that great of a year over there? Yeah, I mean that's that's still going to be the fear I think for a lot of people when it comes to the, the playoff committee is when you go to twelve. Yeah, I mean I suppose the cutoff is not as hard because you you would theoretically yeah that thirteenth fourteenth team, you know do they really deserve to be or, or I guess the twelfth team because you you know you're gonna have the, the G five representative in like the, you know a lot, most times you're gonna be like okay well that team didn't necessarily deserve to play for a national championship um, because they lost a few games. I think that's still going to be the fear for people going forward is just that because the SEC is stronger than ever, the Big Ten is for sure stronger than ever, you know, will the committee members just give them way too much credit for the kind of seasons like we've seen, you know, to take, take the example last year, Penn State of, okay, well, you didn't win any of the games that mattered, but you won all the other games. And so it's like, will, will those teams just kind of get a pass due to the, the difficulty of, um, the schedule they're going to play on an annual basis versus what's going on in the Big 12 and the ACC. So, I mean, that, that part, yeah, I think SEC fans um, certainly have to uh, adjust their expectations because, like, you go look at the betting sites now, guys. Like, I think the betting sites say there's going to be, like, eight different teams in the conference that win nine games this year. It's like, well, that's obviously not going to happen. Um, so, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, I, you've got to adjust a little bit from that standpoint. Um, but I, I – I, I think for everybody else, it's I, you're very curious to see where the at-large spots will, you know, just the next best SEC team always get in because, um, you know, we defer to who they lost to. Yeah, you wonder in the committee if a quality loss might be equal to a what is a pretty good win. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a valid concern, um, and I think that um, – especially as these conference schedules get tougher and it like, you don't want that to be something that's just so overweighted that it doesn't matter how you reach the big 12 title game or how you reach the ACC title game. You're, you don't, you probably don't have a chance. Like I think that that's um, there's gotta be some credit given to uh, the, the race that you ran within your own conference and um, the, the resume you built. 
but I, but I think especially with the with how many quality programs are coming into the Big Ten, like I, I just think it's going to be tough, and I think it's a conversation that we're going to have to have in the fall for sure. And you know, probably those those um you know those early teases from the committee of what the rankings look like, I imagine people will find that a little bit frustrating because it is going to feel like until you play some of the big games in November, you're automatically just going to put in, um, you know, what, six, five, six SEC teams into the field. Well, yeah, it feels like the television show will be even more pointless than it already was. <laughs> I mean, it, it was already the stupidest thing that they'd ever done in that, like, all right, great. No, it's not stupid because they made money. Well, yeah, I guess not. Yeah. But, like, as far as, like, the fans getting worked up about it, like, well, you know, the number one team still has five games left to play after this against three really good teams. So it makes it even even worse than that, especially well, considering. Yeah, but team. I'm with you. And I, but I think the flip side of that is interesting, too, is, is that, you know, I think it, it will matter more, especially, you know, mid, mid-season or, you know, earlier in the process. It will matter, like, we will have to care more about 13 to 25 in those rankings and, like, how the committee is assessing the rest of the teams because, that, that was the premise of the playoff is that when you go into November that there's still going to be, you know, 30, 40 teams, whatever, that have a chance to play their way into the playoff. And so we, we are going to have to kind of care about that. And they are, you know, in the past, it didn't matter maybe as much, um, you know, what, what 5 through 25 looked like as long as you got the 4, right? I, I, it, it's going to matter a lot more. There's going to have to be more scrutiny on how they're sorting these teams, what they do with the group of five teams, what they do with the Big 12 and ACC teams, like, um, I, I, there will at least, I think there should be more discussion around that fall, um, when we do that exercise. Um, but, but of course, you know, most people will just kind of fixate on, on one through 10. All right. So what's your favorite part about what you've heard about the video game so far from all of the folks who have played it, uh, uh since last week, Craig, how much time you got <laughs> all um, the time in the world, <laughs> take pal. Your time, my man. Take no, your time. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, no, I'm kidding. I, I they're, they're going to drop a big video tomorrow about gameplay and stuff. So that'll be I think for a lot of people, it's interesting to see what it looks like. Um, but, you know, I, for me, like me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a dynasty guy. I like building a program. I like doing the recruiting and, and the staff building and all that stuff. And, um, you know, it, it certainly sounds like they've, uh, you know, taken that to another level in all the time that's off that they've had with, uh, you know, with adding the transfer portal, with adding, you know, being able to um, hire and fire your assistants and stuff like that. I, I think that just to, you know, by all accounts, we're talking to Chris Manini and others who've, who've uh, kind of witnessed it. It, it, it. it sounds like they did an amazing job of capturing the, the pageantry of the sport and, and what makes, uh, you know, every school and every game different. So, uh, yeah, pretty pretty excited to fire that up. Uh, Max, you have a wife and child, uh, and uh, I recently uh, procured a wife uh, myself. Uh, and Congratulations. I'm, I'm curious as to how it works with your time and being able to build a dynasty mode without uh, interference. There's a difference. He has a child. That's an excuse that he has to handle that. You don't. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm just curious. Are there any tips you can give me to what you say when, like, have you really been doing that this long? Yeah, I mean, so tr- so our our my son he goes to daycare usually from about eight thirty to, to about five, and uh, so from about eight thirty to five, I will be playing video. Games. I think that's probably how it's going to go. And then, <laughs> you know, later, uh, and then you know, after he goes to bed, then I will I'll get some some work done. Probably, I think that's probably how it's going to go for that first week or so. Okay, for someone like me that started <laughs> out with pong, and then uh-huh. I might have been able to go to one game that was football that Craig and I used to play. Back in the day, what uh, what's the trend? I, I guess your transition from one to the next to the next to the next. Do you pick them up pretty quickly as far as getting once you get one and you get a chance to play it a couple of times? It's money. No, no. As, I think as I get older, that's definitely not the case. Yeah. Um, and and I'm not uh, I'm not much of like I bought a new Xbox on you know Black Friday when it's cheap or whatever. But I'm really not a guy that actually spending that much time playing Madden or 2K or anything like that. I, I truly you, – you, I mean, that, that's the, that is the truth, Paul, is that we don't actually have time in our lives for this. So, I know. Uh, you know, it's going to be uh, – yeah, it's going to be, you know, probably trying to squeeze an hour here or there at night um, on the weekdays and stuff like that. But you don't, you don't really have – as a dad, you don't really have time on the weekends now either. So um, that part will be uh, – that part will be a struggle. But I am, uh, I am determined to hold on to my family. Oh, good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, I'm glad that's you good got to hear. priorities. It's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, Max, do you, yeah, do you... I mean, the, don't get me wrong. The priorities are still, like, 
family above game um, at this point in time. But we'll see how good this uh, game. Is. Yeah, for now, for now. But it's a really great game. Then, but I know. haven't played it yet. So right. I mean, you know, ask me in a couple months. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you do you pick up much of anything when when schedules get dropped? Like we're starting to see all the kickoff times. That's just generally exciting because that means we're getting closer. But does anything ever really pop out to you? I know, like today. Oklahoma, Texas is going to be a, a what yeah. the three thirty Eastern time, or I guess two thirty Central time game with the move to the SEC. They've done that a couple times in the last, uh, I guess, decade plus. But uh, does anything ever really hop out, or do you just generally get excited to uh, to just see game times? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, it, it is exciting to see, and, and especially in a year like this where you have so many like matchups that you know, so many conference matchups that we've never seen before. In, in the Big 12, in, in the, the Big 10 SEC especially, um, and to some extent in the ACC. Um, like, it's just, it, it, it's interesting when you see some of these times listed and you're like, oh, yeah, Colorado, Oklahoma State, that game's going to be a big deal to people. Like, it's just, there's some of those that, like, okay, this is going to feel really different once we get into it. Um, you know, I think the afternoon Red River um, mm. is, to me, having covered a bunch of those, objectively, it's, like, kind of a bummer. I do, I do like you know, that that game's at 11. Um, but, you know, this, you go in the SEC, and, and the SEC has always been about, you know, dominating that 230 window or 330 window. So, um, you know, I guess it shouldn't be that surprising with the league that you're in um, and, and the way the TV partners want to do it. Um, so, you know, it's just going to be uh, a real – that 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 crowd's going to be an all-timer, I think, because, um, you know, I think that the, the SEC – uh, stakes uh, raise it up even more, and those people um, are going to just be absolutely hammered by two thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, one thing that Paul brought up, uh, and you, you mentioned that even SEC, Craig, you mentioned how much interest in Destin or whatever. The NFL started doing that, right? Where even their NFL meetings started to become like every day, every week during the off season, they still dominated the news cycle. Is college football following that specific type guide uh, book as well? Yeah, I think you saw that um, in the way that, for example, the way the Big Ten went about structuring their TV deal and trying that to have, um, you know, games in every window. And, uh, you know, that, that, I mean, obviously, they, they, you know, the big noon approach um, has been working, but then, um, you know, to try to have the night game on NBC and stuff like that. Like, I, I do think you're seeing these executives um, are trying to, like, capture a, a similar effect. And, you know, I, I do think that makes it a lot of fun. I, th- I you know, I do think, you know, when, when we get into it, um, you know, to, to have the game starting at 11 central and then to be watching all the way till, you know, the end of the, the Pac-12 or the end of the, the mountain game, um, you know, that, that, ju- that will be a little bit of adjustment with, with no pack after dark, but, but there will still be games in that window. So, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that that experience uh, from start to finish, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good thing. And I think that, that the big noon, has spread things out a little bit more, which is probably a positive. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Enjoy the game uh, tomorrow and also into the summer from 8.30 to 5. Max Olson, college football writer with us from theathletic.com. Coming up, the 